welcome to Canada. Yeah, thanks, man. That was awesome. And congratulations to the crossing. I logged 25 hours flying with this crew. Otherwise, just a long flight. It's just a long flight. Yeah, yeah correct. It's been a long uh, few days. Uh, I, do you still know about which kind of date we have and which kind of time and where we are? <laughs> no, yeah, you told me that I would lose track of time and space. This is the final episode of the largest general aviation trip that I've ever been a part of. I think so. This is more or less the easy part. And then we come to the first uh, North Atlantic route. Certainly, you have to do the landing in Canada. First yeah, one. man, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to top that Greenland landing, though. Franklin, one Actually, it's going to be pretty gusty here, isn't it? What was it again? It was 15 gusts, 22. Oh, yeah. Flying this route, we had to do six landings. It's really going up and down. Each with their own unique challenges and rewards. The Blue Angels are standing there. Wow. 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 And that was a fitting reception for Mickey's first time completing this Atlantic crossing solo. His genuine excitement was inspiring the whole time. Yeah! Steven Martin, how's your flight going? Mickey was about 15 minutes behind us for this whole trip. My North Atlantic Bible, this is here. What's this frequency? I never remember this frequency. Martin is the chief pilot here and it was a privilege to fly with him. And my guide throughout the trip when I couldn't be with Martin was Mickey. He's the newest member of the flight operations team here. My objective with this production was to both experience and capture the process of ferrying two aircraft all the way from Austria to Canada. You greased it again! Frankly speaking, flying a diamond is a simple, a simple task. This is, this is built to be easy to operate. And I can't disagree with that. What made this mission hard was not the stick and rudder flying part. I don't want to put pressure on you, but I want to have the same grease landing as yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, but... No pressure, but... Here's the pressure. <laughs> Honestly, all the landings I did on this trip were greasers, but it wasn't because of superior skills. It was largely because the aircraft is easy to fly, and Jared set me up for success on my initial familiarization flight. The real challenges were about executing the trip overall, and that's what I've tried to capture with this series. So the only thing is you will be cleared into, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit over here. So if you be standard departure out, I have a pickup on route. So I tried really hard to wear my pilot hat as well as my filmmaker hat, while I was on board with this team, learning about the process. Okay, yeah, get in the seat, let's do it. This episode covers the last three legs of the trip. This is Martin during the first leg, entering the flight plans for the last three. Panel, message, enter. Sierra Fox, Giga, Ignok, Kinky, Yankee Fox, Bravo, that's correct. Store, that's pretty straightforward. Next is from Frobisher Bay to La Grand Riviere, which is a very, uh, Complicated flight plan. It's a direct <laughs> 672 miles car, uh, direct flight. That's nice. And the last one is then from Lagrand to London, Ontario. And the uh, store. Good. We have all the flight plans in there. That's awesome. In the old days, you could turn it now. Oh, yeah, man. Just with this thing. It took half a flight to get all in. And uh, yeah, we don't even need this, even if it's cool. Still easier because you did this at home. Yeah, and yeah, and, aut and uh, automatically with four flights, so this is just it became so easy, everything. During pre-production, I asked viewers to submit key questions. Many of them are addressed on the way to Greenland. Bravo Golf Kilo Kilo, this is Kulusuk, that's a grabber strip. If the wind is, is bad, you could go down over here, but it's full of obstacles, so you better be sure that the weather is good if you go there. Because otherwise there's not much choice to land in between and so on, so you better do your flight planning correctly. So yeah, if you're on the way and you find a point of no return that the weather's bad, do you, do you make a decision of like this certain distance that you would turn back? Right. The point is if you go to Nasasuak, you, you will not overfly Kulusuk, right? So you go straight down here. Yeah. Nasasuak is a beautiful airport. Yeah, so this is really nice to the fjord and so on. You overfly the icebergs when you land. Yeah. Also, Kurosuk is nice, the same, same story over there. So it's really, uh, landscape-wise, it's beautiful to land it, but this is always a trade-off, landscape against, against uh, operational suitability, uh, because the minimums are high and you need to have good weather to get into these airports. So we'll pick this one up at the end of day two, departing from Greenland. Martin and I are already on the way, and this is Mickey getting going. So, hello again guys. Sorry for not showing anything here in Kangalusak. We had to get things done. 
quite fast. And yeah, priority number one when we do this is not filming or anything else. Oscar Delta Bravo, clear for takeoff, runway 27, wind 1, correction uh, variable, 8 knots. Yeah, we didn't get a good amount of the like, beauty B-roll shots on this trip, but from my perspective, educationally, and I think the people that I'm kind of talking to want to see it from the perspective of the operational aspects. We, we got to learn. I think Mickey is learning a lot. You know, this is not easy weather. It's like doctors, right? There's uh, two doctors and three opinions, right? <laughs> and uh, depending which source you take, right? This source, this source, this source, everybody has a little bit of a different different uh, weather report and the end of the day it's the experience you know okay which one do you trust most and how do you see the weather and how will it work because if you take the most conservative one you have flown today right because it's just not working out well i mean the hard part is over really isn't it uh, yeah i'm still looking into the front here just before recaluate and occlusion that might bring some icing areas up to our altitude here so do you want to just specifically address the earlier departure out of Reykjavik, the three sources we looked at, and then the logic, and then, because I can use, I can show uh, the screenshots of actually what we looked at, and then if you want to talk about the strategic planning. So basically we had four sources. Uh, one source was from Autoruta, the Gramet. I would have said, looking backwards, this was probably the most accurate one today. It basically said there was some icing on the climb out to flight level 200 after leaving Reykjavik, but there's a cold front we had to pass, which brings out icing up to 200. Then just before the east coast of Greenland, there was a little bit of easier weather, and then to uh, the end of, of the flight to reach uh, Kangalusa Xenostrom, yeah, there was again some system in there with icing. So the idea was actually to stay within lower than the freezing level, so which is flight level 80 at this time, until path into the cold front, climb up flight level 200 to be over all the other weather. The only problem what we had is, well, when we pass the cold front and the weather gets colder, right, we might actually see that the freezing level drops down and we might see some ice then after, after all. Let's talk about Mickey, like we're, we're a two ship here, so we have right. to think in terms of the weakest link. Right, yeah, because he has a 42 without anti-icing in the back, right? So what we did is actually we didn't touch our anti-icing system at all. So to simulate the same thing and and so we, we would be ahead of him and we could report actually whatever he will see and he will recognize that if the icing would be bad, uh, then we can always switch on ours and report that back and he can avoid the icing areas or return to Reykjavik. Then a very icing conservative one was the four flight, which basically said uh, moderate to severe icing, right? We looked at the, no, we had five actually. We looked at the Canadian weather, which was actually very accurate, which was fine. And uh, the FAA weather and uh, also the Greenland weather. And so we brought together our own truth. And you also applied a lot of your own experience having done this, so you had a gut. I've seen such kind of weather before, yeah. yeah. But this is this is what what a new guy needs to learn, right? Because because of the he sits there then forever. If you have this kind of system that waits for for the nice uh, blue sky day, yeah, that might be a week, right? Yeah. So he needs to find this together, and, and this is experience which you give further to to the next ones, and they need to learn. Doing it the first time, I probably would have not flown on this weather report. But if you have a guy in front of you who did it a couple of times before. Yeah. So, well, no, this is feasible. We do it like that. Yeah. Well, and I'm I'm half an hour back behind him, and I can always return. Then that's that's a safe thing to do. I guess also, so logistics-wise, you did a lot of this filing like a week ago, where you planned the routes, you sent out the emails to the various FEO handlers. Craig, um, how would someone who doesn't, who's just doing this for the first time, even begin to attack that? Martin's answer to that question alone was five minutes long, and that's among the several exclusive raw segments that I've put up on Patreon for the supporters there. In Dubai, you can you can pay for the handing two thousand dollars. Really? One landing. Oh. And this is not the most expensive what we have seen. Wow. That's cool. These airplanes don't require ferry tanks. They're just good range. Yeah. We're just flying here from Greenland to Canada and got another 40, 40 gallons uh, reserve. <laughs> About half of the tank reserve. So with that in mind, should we do some pumping? Oh, why should we not? Yeah, yeah. sure. Let's pump some fuel from the auxiliary tanks to the mains. 
Yeah, thank you. I take take about one of the other. So, we're coming to Iknok. Iknok is boundary of the Canadian airspace. Oh, You're yeah. back. Steve. Back home. Been a long uh, few days. Like when I did that PCR test with Mickey, I feel like that was so long ago, but I'm realizing, oh, that's still valid. No, that's, that's two days ago. Yeah, that feels. Yeah, yeah. You're on Monday, today is Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Time we, have, we have left Austria yesterday morning. Yeah, that's crazy. That feels longer ago. That's tough life, uh, but then you, you manage to keep yourself really active and stay healthy, and you, you're able to just sleep and stay exercising. And yeah, yeah, I do, I do, I do like to do some sports on the on the route, so because this this so keeps I'm your. I'm looking so if I want to climb Ira, I'd first tell the new game when she transfers me to Iceland. Correct. You need to have a revision of your oceanic clearance for that, uh, but it will not be much. So, but uh, if you would like to, I uh, should go ahead and and, and inform inform uh, no information. But don't climb before you, your oceanic clearance is received. And that's from Iceland, right? Well, they will get it from Iceland, but Nuke information will tell you. That's copied. Yeah, this is cool. So you got your apprentice behind you, and coaching him on the nuances, what what to do, and so on. He's really been doing great. But it's, yeah, it's very. He's very confident. He's very capable. It's pretty cool to see him get there. I see Canada. You see Canada. I see Canada. There on the two o'clock position. There's an airport actually over there. A uh, Gravel uh, Lifesaver Airport. Where is it? There. So try to pronounce that. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Tiki Tachuak. I hope I did say it correctly. I don't know. Okay, let, let's see if we can reach Gander or Edmonton. Like on their relay station? As we need to report uh, Ignog. Ignog. Ignog at time 1652, as we said. As we said on the report, and the fuel is 65 remaining, and we should have 65 remaining. Uh huh. This is four flight. Yeah, so yeah. that's pretty cool. Uh, uh, yeah, it's been amazing to watch these numbers line up. Uh, yeah, love that. Gander, Gander, good day. This is uh, Diamond uh, DS62, Oscar Echo Uniform Delta Alpha. So guys, as you can hear, we approached Canadian soil. Woohoo! Certainly you have to do the landing in Canada. First yeah, man, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to top that Greenland landing though. <laughs> don't worry. Actually, it's going to be pretty gusty here, isn't it? What was it again? It was 15 gust 22? Oh yeah, and it's about uh, uh, 60 degrees from the side, so. Gusting 22. And what are the limits on this plane? It's 25 knots crosswind component. Nice. As demonstrated, not really limit, but yeah. So, then I can arm the approach. Right path is white. So armed. Ah, that's such a cool feeling, coming into the cloud. So this will maybe be bumpy. Yep. So. Okay, final check. Three greens. Red light off. Parking brakes is released. Flaps is landing and yeah. Landing on all discretion and here in the car do it. Uh, I step out of the pedal, sorry. Minimums, minimums. You greased it again, come on. All right, this is it, landed in a Callowit. That is the crossing done. And there's Vicky right now, I'm gonna get the shots. So we made it across the entire Atlantic Ocean. And now Martin wants us to get up this freaking hill. This was our night stop for day two. And then it was an early start to day three for a really big day of flying. Good morning guys from Iqaluit with a nice rest here and that's the last day. So today we fly from here to La Grande Riviere, somewhere in Canada. Then we continue to the factory in London, Ontario. So although the ocean crossing portion of this trip is done, we actually have some really rugged and remote Canadian terrain to fly over. 
And with that in mind, there was a fair bit of interest in flying along for these flights in Flight Sim, and supporter Mike actually went ahead and did the work to build out these flight plans to import. This is an unlocked Patreon post that anyone can access if you'd like to check it out. We're cruising along here on our way to La Grande, and we're on uncontrolled airspace and on an en route frequency. And we have to report like our positions from time to time. I don't receive any radio from any VOR here. So what I did, I just took up four flight and as you can see here, I took the nearest airport, Inuk Chuak, and used this feature. And now I got the track from there, the magnetic one, which is 110, the distance, and now I can do my position report. So that's a very handy feature here on four flight. Nice view. It's unbelievable how much lakes there are down here. Yeah, it's a crazy landscape. Since we're uncontrolled, what we actually could do is like autopilot off and do whatever we want here. Take a look down here. Of course, the downside, you don't want to be forced landing out here. That's an amazing landscape. Previous episodes have covered the survival equipment that we have on board. That would not be possible in Europe. Do whatever you want. And remind me what point is it to press approach mode again? Once you're actually... When we, we are cleared for the approach, but we will not get a clearance, but actually when we want to fly the approach. So, so it could yeah. be at any point. At any point, actually, you can you can press it already because we are already routing to Eptin, which is the national approach fix. So yeah. you can, you, if you like, you can press approach mode. The only difference is, uh, two differences now, the GPS and lateral navigation mode is now more accurate. Um, and uh, the glide path became uh, on up mode, on standby mode. As you see, this GP right. Yeah. Uh, correct. So it, it, waits, it waits for the glide path. And now you should not distinguish. Uh, you should distinguish between uh, the V path and the GP. So this is GP is the is the magenta diamond, the glide path. There's really a clearance limit. It's like a glide slope on an ILS, which you fly down. And the vertical path, what you're flying now, is this chevron. Yeah. yeah. And this chevron is actually. Uh, that, that's me, yeah. um, And this, this chevron is basically here. This, this uh, artificial descent path we have, we have created in our flight plan. When the diamond comes into the middle, yeah. right into the city, and into the center, then the, the GP becomes green, yeah, and changes in. And then alt just disappears because we're alt disappears. Correct. Then we dial in the missed approach altitude. Right. It's good that we get a plane wash before we arrive. Very nice. And since this is an, an uncontrolled airport, I will arm the approach mode. Glide path is armed. And now the aircraft will fly the approach on its own. So I'll make sure that the windows are closed. It will be a slight crosswind though, right? It, but the wind is not so much for those six knots. So. Yeah. Was it zero three zero the wind? Correct. There's the rain. Watch the plane. I, I don't want to put pressure on you, but I want to have the same greased landing as yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, but... No pressure, the, but... Here's the pressure. <laughs> so, 500 to go for minimums. Where am I inside? Continuing. Sure. Alright, and you're suggesting we stay at 105? For the time being, because we're expecting shear. some kind of a shear here. We're still having... It's not going down, uh, but we just had 55 from the side. Yeah. But 40, see that, how it's working down? Yeah. But this is a very smooth transition. There's no big turbulence in there. Yeah, so it's ready in case. Very nice. Ah, uh, that's fine. You can go for a normal landing. Alright, maybe should we go full flaps? You're saying because of the sheer knot. No, you can go for full flaps. We already go good for speeds. Right. Minimums, minimums. And ask the Alpha is uh, for final runway 31. Any wind check, please. Wind is 0104. Thank you. Ah, okay. So I said no pressure, but I want to grease it. See the grease. <laughs> and short. And short. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to make that taxiway though, because they're wet, I don't want to break, no, you agree? Just let it go out, yeah, no worries. So that was a super quick fuel and bathroom stop. That was a cool approach! Yeah. 
And then we were on our way again. Say again. In what 4000, you have blue skies. Perfect. So yeah, that was the last takeoff. Kind of sad. But yeah, hey. Now it's time to eat everything we got. And hoping for a nice arrival in London. It got significantly warmer as we got closer. You can see even at altitude, Mickey has removed his jacket. Uh, Oscar, uh, Echo Uniform Delta Alpha, you're clear direct to Yankee X-ray Uniform, London uh, VOR, on, and then the airport. That Yankee X-ray uh, Thank you very much, sir. Oscar, Delta Alpha. You're welcome. I want that too, man. And Toronto, is that also possible for Oscar Echo Uniform Delta Bravo? Oscar Echo Uniform Delta Bravo, you're clear direct to Yankee X-ray Uniform. That's the uh, London uh, VOR and then the uh, airport after that. Direct to Yankee X-ray Uniform at the airport after that. Thank you very much, Oscar the Bravo. I did not miss any opportunity to write anything down, which got mentioned uh, from Martin. All the frequencies and what to call where, over which, which height and everything, so it's a lot, it's a lot. I'm gonna be so freaking happy when I land, I tell you that. That's Oscar Echo Uniform Delta Alpha, contact Toronto Center now, 12402. That will be... 12402, Uniform Delta Alpha. That will be the same for me then. Let's skip closer to the arrival. Part of what we're up against here is these fast building towering cumulus. Toronto Frosty 176. Whoa, that was... Frosty 176, Yeah, we've got some build-ups ahead, requesting deviations right of track. Get a little turbulence now, to the build-ups. Anything loose in here? Everything loose in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we're tight, so we're not going to hit our heads. And as we mentioned before, it's a runway 15 arrival, so... Um, we do a long landing. Okay. But still grease it, please. <laughs> <laughs> my luck, I'll screw up the last one. <laughs> and vacate on the very last end and direct it to the Foxtrot taxiway to the factory. On top of trying to race these storms, we're also trying to get in before they close the airspace for a rehearsal for the air show that's scheduled for tomorrow. So it's pretty exciting what's happening in London this weekend. Forgot I had that on. Yeah, you would have noticed when you get out of the airplane. <laughs> I will not let you. Yeah. This is like the flying dream, eh? Like going right through the clouds, right to the top. Yeah, it's too beautiful, huh? This is what you want to get your pilot license for, but then when you do it, they're like, stay away from the clouds. VFR only. Uh, be careful, Martin. Hello. Yeah, I actually just got a message from, from the base, and they said, at 1900 Zulu, they probably closed the airspace for one and a half hours for rehearsals or so. So uh, you might actually get the power levels forward. We'll go. So we're still with 53. Here you go. We flew all over the North Atlantic to be here on Alexia on the minute. <laughs> but you've done this uh, more than once. Seeing the planning and you pull it off like clockwork, that's... Uniform Delta Alpha descent 3000. Descent 3000. That's something. That's something. Toronto, good day, Oscar. Uniform Delta Bravo passing 8800, descending 7000, inbound. London. Uniform Delta Bravo, Roger, altimeter setting at London, 3012, information Romeo, expect on at runway 15. 3012, information Romeo is on board and any chance that is Alexi. Affirmative, Uniform Delta Bravo, proceed direct to Alexi, keep your speed up for now, we're hoping to get you into the same uh, same gap in the show here that your uh, company is going into ahead of you there, so keep your speed up and I'll advise. Yeah, I'm giving all my eyes. <laughs> Uniform Delta Bravo, thank you. Descend when ready, 4000. Uniform Delta Alpha, affirmative long line and approved, the plan to vacate at the end, that we'll arrange for a vehicle to ask for to the fast truck. Yeah, so perfect. Uh, then we do a long landing and vacate at the end. And if you say we are 1900 at the airfield, we are 1900 at the airfield, what you say? <laughs> sure, fine, I'll disconnect the <laughs> autopilot. Sure, go ahead. So let's go wait a little bit on flaps just so we land long? Yep, I agree. So aim to touch down like the yeah, middle of the runway type thing? Yeah, yeah, something that don't break. So. Super, he's here. Sending 3000 and clear for approach. Full flaps. Gears down. Gear to land, gear down, no red. Pocket brakes release, flaps landing. Good to go. Can please report hit lol. We'll report hit lol and I'll give you all I have.
Getting both aircraft to base literally within one minute of closing the airspace was awesome, and at least I didn't screw up my last landing. And he greased it again. Amazing. <laughs> Take it. One mile. You see the speed? 180. Idle. Get out. Check gear. Three green. Autopilot off. Minimum. Speed check, flaps approach. Speed check, flaps landing. Flaps landing. Gear down, rudder trim, exit. Now we're gonna do the long landing. I wanted me that. You see that? 180 to 90 knots in one mile. Nice. Awesome. I spent 25 hours in this thing and my butt doesn't hurt, so that's a good sign. <laughs> Welcome back. Thanks, man. It was great. And this guy, one flight, you got me ready for it, Jared. In one flight, you got me ready for this. The blue angels are standing there. Oh my god. Wow. 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 My favorite part of this was definitely seeing Mickey's genuine, pure excitement for having done this mission for the first time solo. It was totally inspiring and I'm honored to have been able to share it. Until next time, keep your flight chops sharp. Is that awesome or what? Is that awesome? <laughs> Congrats. Thank you. Well done, sir. This is a nice reception, huh? Takes in next to the to Blue the Angels. There it goes. It can be loud. What? Right there.